I'll hand them off your business card or contact information, and he'll contact you about that. All right, so thank you. Great. Hi, everybody. I'm Jim Gilbert. Uh, two things real quick, housekeeping things. This can be a two-hour presentation if I wanted it to. If you all want to give me your business cards, two things will happen. One, I will send you a link to the two-hour presentation. And two, uh, I'll choose one of you guys to get a free uh, social media review for me. So um, without further ado, let me try to stay out of the way of the screen. Let's get started. Uh, my name is Jim Gilbert, uh, and I am a marketing consultant. Boo, I know. Uh, I actually started in this business a long time ago. Wait, do I even need to use this? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll just use my New York voice. Okay, so I started this business a million years ago in the direct marketing business and the catalog business and advertising and sales. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because I translated all of that into my social media stuff. I don't just do social media. I'm not telling you that as a sales pitch. I'm telling you that because social media is part of, as everybody probably knows here, the bigger picture. So, uh, President Gilbert Direct Marketing Association, also the president of the Florida Direct Marketing Association, FDMA.org. Uh, we're a marketing uh, organization, a networking organization as well, kind of up in Broward and Palm Beach. Uh, president. I also do some writing, teaching. I used to teach right down the block here at Art Institute. Okay, so let me give my orientation. By the way, I'm going to go pretty quick. You guys mind if I go quick? No. Good. Okay. Cool. So here's the thing. There's only one valid definition of business purpose to create a customer. Okay. This is the rule I live by, and this is the rule that I proffer to everybody, and I suggest that they live by in the business world themselves. Companies are not in business to make things, they're in business to make customers. Anybody know who said that? <laughs> Peter Drucker. Um, so this that's that's my little orientation for today. I say that at the beginning of every single presentation that I do. Okay. By the way, feel free, tweet to me at Gilbert Direct. Um, no one who scores no anything, just Gilbert Direct. Um, follow me, all that stuff. Um, this is the formula. Okay. Here's what it's about. It's about engagement. Okay. Everything we do is really all about engagement. So social media law number one, if I get through three of these laws fully, that's going to be a lot. The other six will come when you guys email me or give me your emails. I don't mean to do it like that. Jesus. What? Caesar. Actually, I'll go through all nine. I'm only going to... I'll spend a lot of time in the first three. So, social media law number one. The deeper the level of engagement, the deeper the trust and bond is with your company. We all know that nothing happens without engagement, right? If somebody isn't engaged, they're not going to order, they're not going to buy, they're not going to like, they're not going to do anything. So, as I'm speaking today, here's what I'd like you guys to do. Please map what I'm saying onto your particular business model. I'm going to give you a bunch of examples for businesses I've done work for, <coughs> but you know, kind of flip it around in your head, make it be about you. Okay. So, how engaged? Scale of one to ten. Just yell out numbers. Are your social media fans five, ten, six, two, three, one? Ten, one. Ten, one. I like the ten over there. Six. All right, good. This is the interactive portion of the presentation. That's over. Uh, <laughs> social media law number one continues. Reality, everybody here probably knows that social media has changed. We still need it, right? Yes. Okay, good. Just check it. <laughs> um, engagement, <laughs> a lot more difficult. You have to work harder to get her done. That's my southern voice. <laughs> everybody is doing it. There's a lot more clutter out there. So many messages, hard to get through. Facebook al algorithm. Uh, that's a whole other story. Um, basically, what EdgeRank does, that's Facebook's algorithm, kills your posts dead. 6%, 3% of the people that you post to actually get your stuff. Whole story. I'll tell a bit of the story in a couple of minutes about that. Um, basically, what Facebook is doing is forcing you to pay for play. They're forcing you to buy your customers and then reach your customers. Twitter is probably going to do the same thing. There's some noticeable things happening over at Twitter, too. So. The goals of every social media market are still the same. Just because everything is harder, 
nothing's really changed, right? You're still trying to engage. You're still trying to draw people out. You're still trying to get people involved. You're still trying to become that thought leader, especially if you're on the B2B side. Uh, you're still trying to generate authority. You're still trying to tug at their heartstrings. At least I hope you're trying to tug at their heartstrings. Something which I'll talk about even more in a couple of minutes. Um, telling a story is another thing that you're trying to do if you're doing it right, or at least, in my opinion, if you're doing it right. Um, creating drama. I love to create drama. Well, I'll talk to you more about that in a minute. Can you tell I'm a dramatic guy? Uh, but now, what we, we really have to do is we have to work harder, smarter. We've got to really get, you know, do a lot more to get half as far now. So uh, I'm going to teach you a little bit about how to do that right now. So there's like different levels of engagement. People I talk to all over the, all over the place, some people have 10, some people have 2. I've got 8. 8. Whatever. Anyway, so the first, the first level of engagement is what I call brand impression. Somebody may have retweeted something and you saw it in your, in your news feed. Somebody may have commented, liked something, showed up. Uh, so you kind of get a casual impression of the brand. There's no engagement whatsoever. They haven't done anything to really engage you yet. Number two is somebody who actually goes in, likes, follows, whatever. I'm going to use like kind of generically here, if you guys don't mind, because it's kind of a simple term. Somebody who likes the page, they're following along, not really doing much of anything yet, but they're, they're there. There's your giant opportunity to convert to the next level. The next level is somebody who's a, what I call a better like or a super like. These are somebody who engages, they hit like, they comment, they retweet, they share, all of that stuff. But they're not doing it on a consistent basis. They do it based on, you know, whenever the whim hits them. If you got some really good content, they'll do something with it. Okay, but then comes the better one. This is a super like. This is number four. And that's somebody who engages often and always. And then you've got your minor brand advocate, somebody who's going to actually go in and recommend your brand. And then we have the holy grail here, number six, the super brand app. So those are the people who are out there constantly selling your product, doing your sales job for you. Thank you. Right? But there's a dark side to this. You've got a dislike. That's somebody who's disgruntled. You've done something to make them want to go away. And there are two kinds of dislikes. Dislike number one is the kind of person who goes away and you never hear from them again, have no recourse whatsoever with them. And number eight, what I call the super dislike, is somebody who is an engaged dislike. Somebody who's going to go away and they're going to say all kinds of stuff about your brand. And those are the people that drive every single one of us in here crazy, right? Right. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Scare me. I thought I was the only one who got negative on social media. Okay. Um, but those people, if they're willing, here's the point. If those people are willing to open their mouth, raise their hand, say, I am pissed off at your brand. You screwed me, you hurt me, you did everything in your power to make me not like you again. Those are your next brand advocates. Those are your yeah. super brand advocates. All you got to do is solve their problem and solve it in a way that's better for them. And they'll love you. And then they'll go and tell everybody in the world, because who doesn't like to hear about a company that was benevolent and flipped around the negative, oh, they screwed up, whatever, and look what they did for me. Quick story, very quick story. I worked for a company called The Fresh Diet. Anybody hear of it? Yes. Meal delivery diet company. I know yeah. everybody snicker now because I'm a big guy, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, we had a woman by the name of Carol. I'll talk a little bit more about Carol in a minute. Carol found the drivers in the middle of the night drinking beer on her lawn instead of delivering their food. Oh, wow. <laughs> she complained. I found her, solved her problem. And from that day on, that's five years ago, from that day on, every day she takes a picture of her food. She gets her food delivered every day for five years from the company. She spends a fortune with them and pits pictures up of her food. She's like the best brand <laughs> advocate ever. All I did was say, I hear that. These guys are out of here. I mean, who drinks beer on me? They're gone. Anyway, that's how to turn a super dislike into a brand out. I keep pointing that way. So the goal is to move everybody from one to six, and the goal is to move everybody back from seven, back to and eight to six. 
field. So how do you find and create brand advocates? Okay, good question, right? Here's, what, here's where I'm going to say probably some things that other people aren't going to say to you today. Okay? Number one, listen. I don't mean listening tools. I mean listen. Okay? Spend time on your sites. I'm going to talk more about that in a second. Okay? See who's retweeting, see who's sharing, see who's liking, see who's posting. All of that stuff. Those, ladies and gentlemen, are your super brand advocates waiting to happen. Okay? Make contact. Now, here's something kind of interesting. Make contact and build relationships. How many of you guys actually have relationships with the people that come to your fan page, your fan pages? This is good. Okay, what do we got? We got maybe 15% of the room. Great opportunity for all of you guys. I'm friends with dozens and dozens and dozens of people who were a company I worked for a few years ago and companies I work for now. They're fans. They're friends of mine. You go to my Facebook page and you see me hanging out with them talking. Seriously. There's a huge opportunity now, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. So, your brand advocates are everywhere. We talked about Carol, but there's also Donna, there's Josh, there's Trevor, there's Tina, there's Angel. I'm going to coin a term for you guys. We're going to call social media, we're going to say it's about real relationships. Okay? It's not about all the other stuff. It's about building relationships. One-to-one, -one, it's that whole Poppers and Rogers or whatever their names is, one-to-one -one marketing thing that we heard about 20 years ago. This is it. This is the opportunity to build real relationships with people and have them last for life and have them buy and buy and buy from your brands and really, really walk through fire. If you ask them to walk through fire, they will if you build a real trusting relationship. <clears throat> we call that the law of relationships. Real. Coin that. So then, back in the good old days, three years ago, um, you know what we tried to do was we tried to put a face on that nameless, faceless corporate identity. Uh, corporate identity. You know, if we're new to systems, Fresh Diet, who I worked worked for at the time. <coughs> Want to be real people selling real stuff and helping real people's lives, right? Not some faceless Nutrisystem, Jenny Craig, any people from Nutrisystem. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, but now, what we've got is we've got the nameless, faceless corporate social media pusher. And I invite you guys not to be that person, okay? Please don't do that. Don't be an info pusher, okay? <laughs> Just don't do it. It's, it's time that I, here's what I ask you guys today. If you take one thing away from this presentation, throw away the tools. Get rid of them. Forget Hootsuite, forget TweetDeck, forget scheduled posts, forget all of that stuff. I mean, I hate to say it, it's going to take you work. You're going to have to get down. Snickers. <laughs> Sorry. I, I don't mean to burst your bubble, I swear. I don't. But you got to get down, back down into the trenches. If you're going to get people engaged in 2014 and beyond, you have to get back down into the trenches. When I first started in social, we didn't have tools. We had me going in there and going, maybe I should run a contest. You know, <laughs> what kind of contest should I do today? Build relationships. It's all about that. Forget the tools. Forget the automation stuff. Okay? You automate things. And we're trying to make our lives better, but we're not. We're actually making it worse. <coughs> Bad news, Facebook's edge, edge rank has now officially killed your Facebook fan page. is dead, right? 6%, less 3% of your posts get through. You have to pay in order to reach the people that you, you know, spent a fortune trying to build and all of your time and energy. Somebody's going to do a class action lawsuit against Facebook one of these days. Mark my words. I will join that. <laughs> if anybody out there is a lawyer. Uh, so it's now a pay-for-play business model, which really sucks. Excuse my language. Okay. So, but here's the thing. If you do it right, Facebook can still be your calling card, right? It can still be the place... Me, I'd rather send people to my engaged Facebook page than send them to my website. Because website, you know, it's grocery wear. 
or an order follow. I want people to come to my Facebook page, follow me on Twitter, and find people who are engaged, happy, shiny, doing all the things that you know make them feel good about the brand and being a part of that brand. People see happy customers and like more. And of course, beyond you know, people liking your page, if you're doing any sort of marketing whatsoever, thousands of people are coming to your Facebook page every day. Right? The ones that don't like, they're going somewhere. And why? Because they want to see engagement. So here's your goals. Build, building relationships equals build engagement, right? Speaking of real voice, you guys, do I sound like a corporate geek to you? No, thank you. <laughs> right? This is how I speak when I post in social media. I speak, I, I don't sound, like I don't try to use big words when I don't have to. Develop trust, we'll talk a little bit about, more about that in a minute. Give to get freebies. How many of you guys give stuff away for free? Three, no, there's about eight people, I think. What's that? Eight percent, ten percent of the room right now? Okay. Give your stuff away. Nothing builds relationships faster than giving people free stuff. And I'll show you more about that in a minute while I get into the case study. <coughs> the amount of time people spend on your site, it means engagement. If they're spending time with you, they're more engaged, right? Engagement equals sales. Sales plus engagement equals advocacy. We'll talk more about those. Let's get into the future, into future ones. I'm giving you a tease here. Um, how I do things, I'll tease people. I'll draw them out once I build relationships, of course. Um, I'll do everything I can to get people to respond to me. And I, I have fun doing it. People get the sense of fun. They get, they, they get real from me. Some of the basics for you. How many of you guys have a call center? How many guys do you have a phone? <laughs> That's your call center. Um, do you tell people when they come all about your social stuff? Do you, do you tell them about Facebook, follow us on Twitter, all that crap stuff? Okay, good. Do it. Um, all your collateral material, does it have everything? Does it have all your social stuff on all your collateral material? Do you guys sell products? Um, if you do direct mail, it's a great place. We got at first guy, we did a lot of direct mail, a million direct mail pieces a month, and our Facebook and Twitter and all that stuff on our thing. We got a ton, ton of people come to visit. Uh, email signatures, you got it all there. <laughs> Newsletters. Any place you can think of. Who's got an odd place that they put their, their social stuff that they want to yell out? House. On their house? House. 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 Okay. To bring in new household products. Okay. Really design, you know, cool. <laughs> on my laptop. On your laptop. That's a good one. Awesome. Anybody else before we move on? Wait. Facebook ads. You guys doing them? No. Boosted posts, sponsored all that stuff on LinkedIn. Are they working for you? Just yell out yes, no, like. No. Yes. So-so. So-so. Okay. Yes. 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 So, so. okay. Still work. There's a lot of controversy. A couple of months ago, a study uh, came out and said that you know all of your likes are coming from uh, uh, Papua New Guinea or something like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know 100% if that's true, but that scared the you know what out of me. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, Facebook is getting better and better at targeting for you guys. They're coming out with cooler and cooler stuff. Um, so it definitely, you know, definitely warrants continuing to do that. But do it, you know, the direct marketing way. Split test, monitor, measure, all of that stuff. Don't just do it willy-nilly, please. Um, okay, let's just move fast. Boosted posts are now my biggest way of spending money on Facebook. Um, contests. I'm going to show you some What's boosted posts? What? What's a boosted post? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sorry. What, what, uh, when you post something on Facebook on your page, there's a little thing on, underneath mm -hmm. that has a slider. That says boost post, and you can literally go in and pay to reach your audience. Um, <laughs> you can pay to reach the people that are already your friends. <laughs> um, so, but it, it, if you want to reach, if you want to reach your fans and your friends and all of that stuff, here's the thing that kills me about Facebook. 
on my personal, not even my business personal page, just in my personal thing, if I want to put up a post, I can sponsor a post of my own. <laughs> if I want my friends, who I've been friends with for a while, I'm 54 years old, to, re to, to see my posts, I have to pay? Where's that lawsuit? Where's the lawyer? Uh, fresh diet. Uh, we did a ton of contests. We did a ton of random freebies. Why did we do contests and freebies? We were not a well-known brand like Nutrisystem Shane Craig. We wanted people to taste our food. We wanted people to see the difference. We wanted people to love it. And I just wanted to give away food because I thought it was cool. No, seriously. Uh, it was just you know very strategic. We just wanted people to talk about our food. And we knew if we put it in their hands, they would. And that built engagement and trust quickly. So give to get contests, major key. And they're fun too, right? Who doesn't like a contest? Here's some contest examples. Uh, you can't see these too well, but this is actually a really cool omelet and some brie cheese right here. We asked somebody to, we asked our fans to plate their foods, put it on a plate, take a picture of it, and best plate wins. We got 50, you know, 100 people sending pictures in, right? Now, who's going to do a better job selling our product? Us? or normal people taking really cool pictures of our product and sending them in. Okay, This is worth millions of dollars in advertising. And we, we got so many cool responses, I couldn't even choose one. I chose like five. So I coined the term overgiving. People would literally ask me, Jim, who they call Mr. Facebook Fearless Leader, they would say, Mr. Facebook Fearless Leader, we built a whole like <laughs> Library of new language here. You know, Mr. Facebook Fearless Leader, when you're on the contest, are you going to be overgiving again? Like, okay, that means, Jim, are you going to give more than one winner? You know, we built a whole lexicon there. It was so cool. It was like lightning in a bottle. And you guys can do it too. This is our fresh diet bag. This woman wanted to be on the diet program so bad, she actually built a cardboard fresh diet bag and wore it in a contest that we did for Halloween. Uh, naturally, I gave her a couple of weeks of food there, oh, yeah. which was awesome. She just wanted to be on there. I wish you could see these better. When you get the presentation, you'll see these pictures a lot better. Uh, we did a motivation con poster contest, and we asked people to you know, go get those motivation posters online and make a motivation poster. Well, this woman won by putting her baby, well, she cleaned it, um, in, the, in the bag. But we can't see it over here. Um, is that better? So she puts your baby in the bag, and of course, when I was talking before about tugging at your heartstrings, what better way to tug at somebody's heartstrings? This thing got so many shares, so many likes, so many comments when we posted the winner that, I mean, even the comments were so cool that I started giving away free food just for the comments. <laughs> and we washed the bag. Okay. Um, more contest example. John Lennon's birthday. We did a fresh diet contest where you take a Beatles lyric and you fresh diet tie it. There's that lexicon again, right? Somebody took the, the song Imagine and turned it into Imagine There's No Diets. I can't sing, obviously. Right? And they did the entire song, lyric wise, all about fresh diet. Can you get better press than that? The thing was so good, and everybody loved it so much, I went back to the guy, I asked him to videotape and sing it. And he came back to me and he did it. And we posted it and it went viral. It was nuts. Contests kill. Simple contests are great. Have you watched At Midnight with the hashtag wars? What? Right, because like At Midnight is a TV show and it's literally like broke Twitter. And at that point, because every night they have like, they give like a challenge, like, but they say like you know ruin uh, uh, you know an athlete or something. I mean, you know, pick an athlete. You, you mean Jimmy Kimmel? Yeah, no, it's called at midnight. The, the, I, I have the to TV show is actually called at midnight, and they give like challenges every single night, and every single night you can see like Twitter just explode oh, with yeah. the you, you can't get more engaged than this, you know. I mean, that's those are great ways to engage people. People like to get engaged over happy things, over fun things, yeah. over things that they're irate about. Right? Um, simple one. Create a haiku about your brand. How many people have brands that you can come up with a dumb haiku about? 
But we did that, and we got like 200 haikus back, all about fresh diet. Video contests. How many of you guys do video contests out there? Submit a video. This one was submit a video testimony for fresh diet. This year, I don't know if you could see this, but right here, this is a fast food place, and he's online in a fast food fast food place, and he goes right up to the thing with the video camera on, and he asks the lady, "Do you have fresh food?" <laughs> and the lady, I, I, again, you'll see the video when you get it online. It's really good. The lady's like, "Oh, fresh fresh food? What's that?" Um, <laughs> Then one of our signature dishes was cheesecake. He asked, do you guys have cheesecake? And the lady just went, oh. Uh, this is Donna, one of our, one of our advocates, OK? Do Donna played in a contest where we said, give us your really bad recipe. She gave meatloaf, right? And we fresh dietized her recipe, turned it into a healthy meatloaf. meatloaf. Not only did she win, then we invited her to our kitchen. And we took all kinds of pictures of her. We invited some friends of hers, all of that stuff. Cooked her meal for her. Tasted her meal, videotaped it, picture, all of that stuff. And it went viral. And now we're into social media law number two. What time is it, guys? Somebody? Great, I got five minutes. You guys <laughs> But you guys are enjoying this, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. I haven't seen more than like 17 people get up and leave, so I'm okay. And if people start coughing, then I know i got to change my tone. Okay, it's time to wake up. Um, brand plus channels equals revenue. What that means, the more channels a consumer interacts with, your brand is more likely they are to buy. Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook, YouTube, whatever. The more they're in, the more they're following you on, the more they're engaged in those, the more likely they are to become your customer or become a repeat customer. And it's all about self-selection. You want to be where your customers are. Again, a lot of video. That's uh, our chef in our LA kitchen. We walked around, showed everybody our spotless kitchen. Great. Everybody now knows what we branded Ray. And everybody knows that our kitchen is spotless. And they see the food being made. Go ahead, Nutrisystem, show us that one. <laughs> Undercover Boss, great TV show. I went, I got a video guide, and we did a 10 minute spoof on Undercover Boss. Right? Within days, we had 20,000 views. Not only did we get the views from our customers, our clients, our prospects, and all of that stuff, but we had it, and it still brought a ton of people. Who was searching on Undercover Boss? And you didn't get sued. No. Who <laughs> <laughs> <I> said that? Attorneys <laughs> are. Yeah, but I need the I need the attorney for the positive thing, not the negative. Okay. But this is great. We we basically did a whole improv video. It was fantastic. You guys Google Fresh Diet Undercover Boss or Undercover Boss the Fresh Diet, and you'll see me even fatter. Um, doing, <laughs> working in a diet outfit. Seriously. Actually, he's lost 50 pounds. Yeah. 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 Getting some video. Yeah. <laughs> you know, my, my son is the videographer for the, for the FDMA. And he comes and he pulled an all nighter like last night. Otherwise, he'd be here videotaping this. I really wish he did. Because, you guys, the energy in this room is really great. It's, Giving me a great opportunity to like sweat my brains out and give you guys a great performance here. Um, Mashable, you guys were sponsoring this. We, we did a partnership with them. Great way to build fans if you have a nice targeted way to uh, do sponsorships. Uh, this drove in like 40,000 fans. We gave one free week of fresh diet away every single day to fans who came over from Mashable. You're telling me it's time. Or you had a question. <laughs> you had a question. What do we do with our cards? Where do we drop them? You'll, you can bring them up to me. Um, just give me a couple of minutes. Let me just get a little bit further in. i got five more minutes to get. Our CEO, we were up for a national award. Um, it was like best new brand or something like that. So as part of that whole thing, it was, you know, we, we gave everybody free food every day to just come into our Facebook page. Um, Brand plus time plus channels equal advocates. Uh, well, you know what? Let me just 
just say that this is the new multi-channel marketing model. We talk about multi-channel and uh, omni-channel marketing a lot, but the more time they spend with your brand in all the channels, the more likely they are to become advocates of yours. Got so much stuff to do. Um, <laughs> this is a, a cross pollination model where the blog starts everything, and then here is you know Facebook, Twitter, all of that stuff. But everything starts on the blog by posting content. It's a very good content driven strategy. I have a I have a new an acronym for you. Can't speak. Um, you've heard of ABCs. This is ABP. Always be promoting. I would literally walk around with my phone and my camera in every office that I work for with clients and just find opportunities to video people and take pictures. I walked in our call center. We had a lull one day, and I caught our call center reps doing the electric slide. <laughs> <laughs> Out comes the camera. Five minutes later, it's on phase two. Phase two. Basically. <laughs> Somebody tweet that at Gilbert Direct. <laughs> uh, so five minutes later, it's on Facebook and then going viral, and everybody's having a blast watching our people in our call center doing the electric slide. Why is this crazy? We're branding our people. They know when they call up, they're going to find who these people are. Right? Uh, wrap yourself around a topic a couple of weeks ago when, what's his face, Zuckerberg, my buddy? Turned um, 30. Uh, actually, this is on their 10th anniversary, which is a couple of weeks before. I wrote a blog post that said Facebook marketing is greedy, petulant child. All about all the things that they're doing. 5,000 views later, right? Um, if you don't have your own content, find other people's content. Share it. Add your opinion. I'm a provocative guy. I love to provoke, poke the bear. Make the issue your own. LinkedIn Publishing, how many of you guys have access to that? You will soon. Everybody here will soon if you're on LinkedIn. Great, great tool. Amazing branding tool, especially if you like content and you like to write. Um, groups. Facebook groups, LinkedIn groups, great ways to get your message out there. Um, here's the post for Don't Trust Anyone Named Mark Zuckerberg Over 30, which was the same article I just mentioned a couple of minutes ago, rewritten from his 10th anniversary of Facebook to his 30th birthday a month later. And you can't see that, but there's about 55, 5,400 uh, views in a couple of days on that. So, you know, coming up with a good, solid, catchy headline like that is worth a lot. So wrap yourself around issues. Um, I have some LinkedIn groups that I started that are really cool. Uh, I keep them spam free, not an advertisement, but I suggest you guys think about what you guys can do for your own businesses to build your own LinkedIn, Facebook groups, and all of that stuff. Uh, now I'm doing the same thing on Facebook. Not taking off like LinkedIn, but whatever. Uh, here's my take on content, B2B social, blog, LinkedIn is key, right? Become a thought leader. If you don't have your own stuff, find other people's and curate it. Um, always be promoting. Remember your ABPs. Somebody tweet that, so I remember it. Um, <laughs> amplify your message and share. Create share-worthy content. Don't just push info. Create stuff that's going to get people to respond. I, I literally, I have to stop here. Bring me your business cards. And... Oh, sorry. Oh. Oh.